Hi, folks. Um, artificial intelligence today. I am just back from Berlin, uh, 24 hours in Berlin, uh, at the first partners meeting of the Partnership on AI, um, the Partnership on Artificial Intelligence for the Benefit of People and Society. Um, this is an organization, uh, Tara Lyons, a phenomenal woman, used to work in the uh, Office of Science and Tech Policy in the Obama administration. They just hired her uh, as the executive director. She's been a Mozilla fellow. Uh, she just started. Um, and uh, this is the organization that the leading AI researchers not the public policy people, not the legal people, not the privacy people, not the product people, but the leading folks actually working on machine learning, on neural networks, on inventing the next intelligence in AI, uh, who know each other well because many of these are leading academics working in industry now, but these are PhDs, these are people with deep uh, history in the nuts and bolts of machine learning, uh, and they publish uh, together, uh, even though they're at competing companies, they they obviously build on each other's work. That's how science works. Uh, and so these folks who are typically engaging with each other at conferences and in the academic world, uh, but now are leading these efforts at, uh, at companies, um, recognize that there are some very, very hard problems that uh, are going to be facing society and people when it comes to AI. Um, and as folks who are building the tools that are going to be used hopefully for very good purposes, whether small good purposes like making sure your um, uh, uh, voice uh, recognition in your, your Siri or your home or um, uh, translation uh, works better uh, to the next generation of intelligent analysis of healthcare data to really understand what's causing some diseases. Incredibly uh, exciting opportunities. Just about every company is looking at AI as the next thing. Um, Jeff Bezos was in Washington a little while ago speaking at the Internet Association's dinner, and I always expect Bezos to sort of be, hey, all I know is give people good prices and a lot of selection and everything else is uh, bells and whistles. Uh, but when he was asked about AI, he similarly said, no, this is not just a new bell or a feature, this is a game changer. So great that the people who are really building this stuff at the senior uh, levels at companies uh, got together, got buy-in from their CEOs and said, we need to work together uh, to make sure that AI is a force for good. And many of the concerns that we hear about discrimination, about losing jobs to uh, automated machines, about ethical decisions that machines may need to make, uh, that we work through these things. And we recognize that it is not just in our hands as companies, as corporate people, uh, civil society, academics, advocates, government have a say, and we want them at the table. And so the partnership uh, reached out and included um, 40, 50 other organizations, uh, Future Privacy Forum uh, among them, uh, but groups from the ACLU to the Electronic Frontier Foundation to UNICEF to um, you name the group that has a deep um, concern about how data is used um, uh, uh, there at the table as, as serious stakeholders uh, sharing the, um, uh, the conversation. So really exciting kickoff meeting. Um, the key thematic pillars that the partnership on AI is going to be handling are, um, and again, this is what the uh, board initially put together and the group that is engaged will be editing and tweaking and, and discussing, um, but I think they built a framework and, and we're certainly working from that right now. One is safety critical AI, uh, since improvements in AI are going to have the opportunity to uh, improve safety and make better decisions about making sure that uh, our cars are safe, that our robotic systems do surgery. Um, uh, but when we're relying on AI for mission critical life necessary decisions, how do we make sure that they are safe, they're trustworthy, and that they're aligned with the ethics and the preferences of people who are influenced by those actions? So hard questions to determine. Uh, we can't have AI decide that a, a drug is safe, uh, even though it may do a very uh, interesting uh, analysis. Um, the second pillar was fair, transparent, and accountable AI. And for my friends in privacy land, uh, obviously that's where we're most engaged. How do we make sure that bias when uh, machines are trained on data that has been collected from the prison system, from uh, students, from 
uh, areas where what's in that data set isn't there by chance. It, it may bleed uh, and have AI exacerbate some of the biases that have already existed in society and make things worse. We don't want that, obviously. Um, how do we know? How can we make sure that these black boxes are in some way transparent so that we know when they tell us this was the right analysis, this is the right conclusion, that um, we don't deny people uh, key benefits um, and end up doing things that are that are racially biased, that are biased against women. How do we hold AI accountable? Uh, again, when it, it, it may end up being complicated code, uh, another key issue. Third, collaboration between people and AI. You know, if a surgeon is, is using a sophisticated tool to do surgery, how do we blend these things together? If um, my assistant is, uh, an AI, uh, should you know that you're talking to a bot if the customer service, what are the issues? Uh, and then what about jobs? What about the social influences? What about the fact that AI may replace certain sorts of jobs? How do we plan for that uh, and stay ahead of that? Uh, and then AI for social good. What are all the ways we can make sure that the uh, civil society groups, the groups who want to use AI to solve problems, have access to the tools or what kinds of projects should government and companies be collaborating on. So uh, very excited that this is gonna be useful. It was incredibly exciting and intimidating to be in a room with some of the smartest people in the world, not just civil society people, but literally the uh, people building these tools at companies and hear how they're thinking about it and to see how eager they were to hear and understand the interest and the concerns of civil society. Uh, other interesting things that happened this week in the world of AI, it was busy week, is ITI, uh, member, Trade Group, ITI, Information uh, Technology uh, Industry uh, Council, ITIC, sometimes people call them, the Information Technology Industry Council, but ITI. Um, they uh, and their um, large group of members, so, some of those members are part of the Partnership on AI, but they're uh, abroad. Uh, uh, important industry group in, in Washington and around the world. Uh, and they put out a set of principles that their members feel are important. Um, so we'll post a, a link to it, uh, but they're really worth looking at it. Um, industry being responsible for promoting responsible development and use, um, public private partnerships, um, uh, uh, safety and controllability, that the data is again representative. So you can see some of these uh, the concepts here, interoperability. You can see uh, many of these concepts uh, being uh, similar. So um, I'm reading them closely. They're on my list. I was in Berlin while they came out. Um, and then the other thing that is on my AI reading list, and I already skimmed this once, but this bears a very careful read. Um, AI Now, which is an institute at NYU that was formed after uh, a group of um, scholars uh, at NYU hosted the Obama administration effort to begin a global discussion about AI. Uh, Kate Crawford and colleagues uh, of hers, Meredith Whitaker, uh, who's at Google Open Research, um, uh, 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 and their colleagues put out a really phenomenal report setting the tone for a lot of the key ethics and policy issues. Um, a lot of key takeaways, but I'll mention just one, which I think seems painfully obvious, but really, frankly, isn't necessarily um, uh, as obvious uh, and, uh, and and really needs to be taken to heart, which is that you know government and other institutions that are serving the public, like making decisions about probation or policing or other areas where there is you know legal effect, um, those folks um, uh, should not be rolling out AI. Core public agencies such as those responsible. I'm reading for criminal justice, healthcare, welfare, and education. These high stakes domains. Uh, shouldn't use black box AI, right? They need to know that if they're using a tool that it has been vetted to be um, uh, non-discriminatory, uh, that they're not denying somebody benefits or keeping somebody in prison longer because the program said so, right? These are programs that can end up being perhaps fairer than a probation judge or a human making decisions. And we've seen lots of cases where frankly, people make decisions and, and those are biased. It looks like a thug to me, you know, keep him in jail, right? A, a better look, but frankly, a better look that uses data that is already not representative isn't gonna give us anything better. Uh, but we need to know and, and to simply buy these solutions because a company says, hey, I've got a tool that seems to be very accurate uh, without understanding the criteria, um, uh, clearly not acceptable for us to lose rights, for people to be imprisoned or to lose benefits or make you know major government decisions. Um, lots more, and uh, we'll post a link 
and I urge you to take a look at it. Uh, two weeks, we, FPF, with our partners at the University of Free Brussels, VUB as they're known, uh, the IEEE Privacy and Security uh, Magazine, supported by the National Science Foundation, um, the um, German Science Foundation, um, some great partners and sponsors, Microsoft, um, uh, Trust Arc, um, uh, MasterCard, um, uh, uh, SAP, um, uh, and some others uh, are helping us put on a really phenomenal program where we have papers that have been uh, written for the program. Papers will be published in the IEEE Privacy and Security Magazine, grappling with AI and ethics. Uh, it's sold out, sorry. Um, when you put on events for free, they get sold out. Um, uh, so it's oversold, but it's gonna be full. Um, but we will be posting the papers, which is actually the important uh, product. Anyway, uh, that's a little update on what's happening this week in artificial intelligence in Berlin, Washington, New York, and very soon in Brussels. Thanks for uh, joining me, and I hope you'll read some of the papers that I refer to, because they are indeed perhaps the most important thing um, about technology going forward. Take care.